Another issue to which I would like to draw your attention is the biggest challenge of our country today is the terrorism. No matter how much we may prepare ourselves, our open borders and our open society makes it impossible for us to predict from where or when and how a terrorist attack may occur. We can only take preventive measures and improve and increase our surveillance. But we can also step up our coordination with other like-minded countries in this area of common concern. You have a key role to play individually and collectively with the governments of your accreditation. This needs to be done and in a well-coordinated and effective manner. This, is also <clears throat> this also reminds me to advise you on the need to take full care to ensure that our embassy and people who work in them as well as their families are as secure as possible. Of late, the embassies and chanceries seem to be increasingly targeted. Shortly, I would like to be assured that all my envoys and officers are safe in their duties. In the near future, a challenge that looms large on our horizon is the situation that we will ob obtain in Afghanistan and the region after the withdrawal of the United States and international forces from Afghanistan. We have no need for a while. Many of these countries have shared with us their commitment to train the Afghans to be self-sufficient. They have said that they will continue the presence of their non-combat personnel in Afghanistan to help in the development and social and political stability in that country. Nevertheless, we cannot escape the adverse impact on our security and we will have to devise a proactive strategy to safeguard ourselves and our interests. Our Blue East policy has had very positive results and we should build on those our <coughs> successes through our bilateral and multilateral engagements with these countries. Our experts have studied China for years now. They are now largest trade partners and yet one of our most serious <coughs> preoccupations. We have been living as neighbors and maintaining peace in our bordering and large, by and large. Similarly, with Pakistan, the issues are complex and the channels with them have been kept open. We have to keep engaged and reach out to build on positive elements that we can identify. The Connect Central Asia Initiative is another promising new area of great opportunity for the envoys in these regions. I am sure that you are making an assessment of their own expectations from these initiatives. Many of these countries are celebrating the 20th anniversary of their independence. We have agreed with them our resources and technology and he <coughs> help them in various areas of their development. I will be quite interested in understanding how these countries see India and perceive their role in our energy security. Distinguished envoys, while sharing these thoughts with you, one cannot but struck by the enormity of the challenges that have taken place in the last 12 to 18 months. They have had far-reaching effects which have swiftly impacted the world. The uncertainties in the global economy, the geopolitical situation in our neighborhood, which is changing significantly, the chronic instability in the Afghanistan-Pakistan region, which will undoubtedly remain an area of focus of some years to come. In the multilateral fora, global governance reforms of the United Nations, sustainable development and climate change are the issues on which I am sure our interests are being pursued most ably by all of you. Bilaterally, in the 
capitals of your accreditation and multilaterally in the international fora. I have great expectations from you all and will welcome periodical feedback about your efforts. With these few words, I wish you all a most productive session over the next three days and safe travel and return to your place of work. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Ready, please. 